You guys are going to be seeing this month's art, for those that haven't seen it. I've got most of it copied, I've still got to do the rest of it. So you're going to see how I do step by step and all that jazz. There we go. Let me turn down uh, Pandora. I don't know why Pandora decided to play Big Hero 6, but I'm completely okay with that, honestly. Also, I called him, but he didn't answer. Magog doesn't like me anymore. Okay, I had to friend. That might work. <laughs> hmm. Yes, no, sorry. You should see. wait till you see the original version of it. Originally what Bosco sketched. You almost got a beard. It's because we thought it'd be funny. Oh, <laughs> try recalling him. If it's that much of a trouble, I might have to figure out Google Hangouts. Which I have a feeling it's going to be a fucking nightmare because it's, it's fucking Discord. What number are we at?
Excuse me. Hey! Yo! Hey guys, it's Magog. Someone let a wizard in here. Yes! <laughs> What's up, man? I heard you're, uh, you're working on something. I am. I am working on a lot of shit. Chill. <laughs> I started a GoFundMe to raise money to bring more Scar to life. Woo! And how much have you raised so far? Um, 3170 the last time I checked. Damn, dude. That's awesome. How much you need, though, is the real question. Oh, that, that really depends on what stage of this operation we're trying to reach here, because um, stage one, I need about ten grand, but I set it for five, because I don't think I'll hit ten grand. <laughs> I, don't... I don't know. You got a lot of people supporting you. Well, the only reason it's over 3000 is because one guy gave $1,500. Jeez. Oh, I saw that. I retweeted that. That is just absolutely awesome. Yeah, so if you're if you're listening one guy who wants to remain anonymous. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Jesus Christ. That is Man, I I hope you're like a rich guy and $1500 is like 12 cents to you. It's you know? A, it's a drop in the bucket. <laughs> like you ever meet those people where they're just like 1500 bucks? Yeah, I got that in my wallet. Oh yeah, I've had, I have a family <laughs> like that. Yeah, yeah, I've got I've got a I've got some rich family members who are like yeah, you know, what? what's 50000 for a brand new car every year? Yeah, you know? right? It's like, you know what I could do with that money? It's like, you, you give me 50000 just once. <laughs> just once, Uncle Junior. Just <laughs> once. Please. If you're, I doubt my 80-year-old Uncle Junior is listening to, um, to, to Purity Sin's Twitch stream right now, but if you are, Uncle Junior, <laughs> just, just alone, man. I'll pay it back. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, um, I might give someone uh, on the 10th when my Patreon pays out because I hope this happens. I'm really yeah, happy to help out, friends. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I I appreciate that. Um, I and I know it's not like a big, like GoFundMe to like save somebody's life or something. So you know, like I understand if nobody wants to donate to it, but I I would love to make this happen. And we I, I plan on building an entire medieval village for Magog to be in and it was and the show was gonna turn into a sitcom, you know? So like it's starting very small. I wanna raise enough to build the first like massive indoor set at the new studio that's being built. I'm already putting my own money into this, so it's not even like I'm raising money just to take it from the fans or anything. I cashed out my four oh one Ks and my mutual funds, like all my retirement stuff, I just I cashed it out. Jeez. Well, so, I'm putting in my I'm putting in twenty thousand of my own money. Well, I can understand so. that because um, to get the comic paid for and the animation we're working on, a lot of it's coming out of my pocket too. So, and I can understand that it's one of those things. And I believe in this, and this is why I want to support. Is I always believe in giving the little guy a shot because I've worked in Hollywood, and after being told several times, nobody wants to see this, nobody wants to see this, nobody wants to see this, and you go to the, you know, you go show it to the public, and the public's like, totally want to see this. It's like, well, you know what? We need to prove you people wrong. Right, and I, and I want to do this on my own too. I don't want some network deal where they'll tell me what to do with my show. Yeah. I want I want to run this all on my own for people to enjoy, and I get to do the comedy I get to do and the drama that I want to do, and I get to have the characters that I want to create, no matter how offensive they are, you know. <clears throat> so, yeah, the the first uh, the first five thousand, like I said, I I really need ten grand, but I set it for five because I didn't think I'd even get close to ten, but. I, that first ten grand is going to go to into building Magog, the indoor set for Magog's magic shop. That's going to be in the village. Well, the good thing is with uh, GoFundMe, if I remember, they can stay up permanently, right? Yeah, you can leave it up for as long as you until you reach your goal, and then you can reset your goal if you want. There you I go. I think though, I think though, it it closes it once you cash it out, though. Um, I used it once to try to do the Forgotten Tune, and you can take money out of it. Yeah, you can withdraw, but if you cash it out, like, completely. Oh, I, mean, I see. 
Yeah, like if I hit if I hit the withdrawal button, I can take like a thousand bucks out of it if I need it. But if I hit cash out, it'll close it down and give me all the money. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So so you like, gotta be yeah, careful you don't do that. Right. You just gotta you gotta know the rules or whatever. But yeah, that that that's the plan is to build Nightshade Village and and fill it with actors and fans that want to come down to Arkansas and be in the background or be main characters or whatever. Like, it's a it's a grassroots sitcom, but I want to involve the Magogonites, my well, dedicated fans. If you're willing to throw in a cartoon unicorn, I'm willing to help. <laughs> <laughs> Anything for a lewd, naked cartoon unicorn. Exactly. Um, but seriously, I'm really excited. That you I don't, I don't understand. I, I don't understand unicorns. They're, they're they're a horse with a dildo on their head. It makes them dangerous at both ends. <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> <that> joke. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like I, I I I just I finally got up the courage to just ask to see if anybody would be willing to stream and get the GoFundMe out there. I guess I could put the link. Go for whatever. it. Put it in the chat. Um, put it. I don't know. Do you need special permissions? No, no, not in ours. Okay. As long so as you're not putting in porn, that's my job. Right, of course, of course. Yes, I <laughs> understand. I understand completely. Let me go grab that link real quick, and if anybody's interested, I also, just last night, a friend of mine drew up a concept for the Magog, um, for the Magog store so that people can see visually what they're trying to help build with the first, you know, yeah, you definitely need initial. stuff like that. Right. And so if you go to the GoFundMe, you can click it too if you want, Sin. I'll open um, it up on the other computer. See, yeah, you can go and see the uh, you can go and see the cool drawing concept That sketch. actually looks uh, real. I like the dragon in the back. That looks really badass. Especially because the green screen, you could just have random stuff in the background each time. Right, yeah. It's gonna the green screen's gonna show like people walking around and the village outside and everything and Magog gets pissed off at everybody and you know, the the, the, the first stage of this is to build the current show that's free on YouTube into just like a bigger environment that Magog can interact with. I'm tired of just sitting behind a little table that's got, you know, skulls and potions and stuff on it, which is cool, don't get me wrong, but I'm in this tiny little apartment. And the, the, the point was to always expand the show. So uh, I'm building a studio out on my 12 and a half acres of land. Damn you and your acres of land. Yeah. And I <laughs> bought 12 and a half acres of land for 28000 which is real cheap for 12 and a half acres. And, but it's undeveloped. So I've got a guy going out there uh, to chop trees down and clear about an acre or two of it for the building site. And then I've got to get a perk test done and get a septic and water in. And um, even with the money I cashed out from my mutual funds and everything, I still got to get a loan to build the building. The money I'm raising for the GoFundMe is to build the set and get props and costumes and all that stuff because the loan is just building the building. But it's going to be just an empty building. You know, like I'm going to have to build these sets. So a lot of it is just, you know raise a little money to get the bigger show started. But the ultimate end goal over the next maybe year or so is to build up to the sitcom that actually has like a, 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 an actual village, Nightshade Village built on it, other actors. Beard Barian's going to come down for three, four months out of the year and film with me. Um, it's, it's, it's a huge project and a huge risk, but I am totally willing to take it because I love this character I created. I love the world I've created. Well, if it awesome. gets big enough, I know, um, who was it, um, Amazon does, like, similar to YouTube Red, except they think they're a little more forgiving on that kind of thing. You should try right. maybe applying it for that. Right. Um, that's, uh, that's something that may happen in the future, but I have to look into that. Um, obviously, I can't do it right now because I have no real show to show them. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you know? Then again, so, I've seen they literally have something like kids playing Minecraft as one of their series. And I'm like, really? If it's popular. I mean, Amazon don't care, man. If they, if they fucking If they make, make money, money, they don't care. Yeah, Unlike they don't YouTube. Yeah, they don't, they don't care. So, But, uh, yeah, I threw the link in there. And if anybody is willing to help a, help a necromancer out, I appreciate it. And if you can't donate money, um, 
you can go subscribe or just go watch some of my videos and see what I'm all about. Uh, right now, it's all just kind of response videos of things that I think are stupid. <laughs> but um, I, I am trying to get away from that a little bit uh, and do a proper show that actually has Magog interacting with other characters in his world and a proper sitcom that's like comedy and drama and real lewd and, and crazy, you know? Like, I, I want to parody Game of Thrones. I want to parody Skyrim. I want to parody, like, all the RPGs and Witcher and shit, you know? Like, <laughs> the whole point of this was to kind of bring, like, a what seems like a serious medieval fantasy genre drama, but then mix in some serious, like, retro comedy you know, into it. Because you get Magog in a very serious world where everybody, it's kind of the opposite of most comedies, juxtaposition comedies. Most juxtaposition comedies, the entire world is crazy, but you have that one, like, serious guy that the audience really, like, lives vicariously through, you know? Yeah. So it, you always see those, those types of movies where it's like the one guy who takes his life way too serious, like Harold and Kumar. You know, but he's got the crazy friend that he has to put up with, right? And then the world they travel through just gets more insane, insane, and we have to see life through the eyes of this guy who takes his life very seriously. Well, my show's opposite. The whole world is very serious. I mean, it's a medieval fantasy realm filled with death and war and politics and, 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 and monsters, you know? And, and everything is very, like, serious and dramatic, and everybody's trying to kill each other, and there's bandits and marauders and monsters and dragons and living dead. And then you throw in the mix the zany wizard who doesn't give a fuck about anybody. <laughs> I and think it it's going to be good. Yeah, it's going to be fun. So, uh, <laughs> you know, we'll see. We'll, see. we'll see what happens. But, yeah, I'm just, I'm just trying to reach uh, uh, some <laughs> new audiences, you know? Somebody said, death, war, politics, monsters, also known as Washington, D.C. Oh, no, we yeah. don't need Magog ever going to Washington, although that would be hilarious. Yeah, 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 no, that, that would be. I think it would I, break I, I do have a, 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 a lovely, dedicated Magognite audience. I mean, it's one thing to be like somebody on YouTube that people like. It's another to have a cult following. Yeah, like, it's kind of weird, isn't it? Yeah, I, I never thought I'd be in a place where I was like, People are like, oh, my Lord, I would sacrifice myself to you. And I'm like, dude, this is it's just a show. <laughs> like, you know, like, but I love it. I love it. I love fans. I love how dedicated they are to the uh, lore. Tell us how you really like, feel. You know, Magog yeah, goes to Detroit. He'd be like, no, I think Magog would have already caused Detroit to happen. That would be the whole reason for yeah. Detroit. Mag Magog goes to sh Detroit would just end up with Magog standing there between derelict buildings going, is this America? Hmm? Am I going to have to bust a cap? I want to see know? that now. <laughs> <laughs> is, is, is that how the hip, cool kids of your world say it? Bust a cap, right? <laughs> <You know? laughs> that is beautiful. Rest in peace, Detroit. Occult fan base. Yeah, I don't know what's worse, the pervy fan base or the occult fan base. Uh, I think they're both about equal because the occult uh, fan base is definitely pervy. Yeah, they do tend to overlap because I've got a bunch of your fans over here. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I just, like I said, I'm, I'm just trying to raise a little money because um, things are a little tight right now. Um, I might even have to get a part-time job because my Patreon is just barely not enough for me to pay all my bills. And now that I'm out of school and the GI Bill is done, I'm not getting that extra money anymore. Mm. So I knew I'd have to do a GoFundMe if I wanted to make this happen. I figured I can make more money on Patreon if I can grow my audience, and if I grew my audience, the only way to grow my audience is to grow the show, so it has to start somewhere, and so the GoFundMe is a, is definitely, is, is definitely the, the only real way to go right now, is to try to raise a little money in order to build the sets that I want to build and expand the show in its current form. But as you can see on the GoFundMe, there's also like five stages of this. And the final stage would be to actually get to having the village built and the actors lined up and all the props and everything and, and cameras and, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, another director and editor, because I'm, I'm also, I can't direct from in front of the camera, you know? Yeah. So, 
it, it's going to be a huge project. You know, it's going to be crazy. Well, the good thing is if you have a lot of actors and they know what they're... Well, I hate, hold on, I hate Chrome. Um, if they know what they're doing, you guys can take turns directing, which is nice. Because mm-hmm. I've, always, I've always found that actors usually do better at directing because they know, you know, what to do behind the camera and stuff. Also, Joker, shut up! I don't... You, no, not you too, Miko. You little hell dog. <laughs> Itty bitty little Dachshun, and she thinks she's a she's big and powerful. She loves trying to bark, but she doesn't quite understand what to bark at yet. Right. So she'll she'll face the opposite direction from the door and start barking all proudly, while the other dogs look at her like you're a little special, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Miko, it's okay. It's just my na- It's just the neighbors coming home. Come on, baby. Uh, special Ed Barking. You leave her alone. She's a good girl. <laughs> the lost member of the village. Oh. See, somebody needs to draw Magog as a member of the village people. Come on. We know we got artists in here. Let's do this. <laughs> you know, that's one thing I don't actually get a lot of, which surprises me given my following. I don't get a lot of fan art. Yeah, I we I get a, a bit even with the comic and stuff. Not a lot of people do fan art. It's it's weird because I know a lot of artists follow. It's just they're lazy. You're all lazy. I did get some awesome fan art, and I'll show it to you from one of my um from one of the developers I did a game for. Where did I put it? I I, I get some things like I had a I had some girl on Facebook build a little diorama of Magog's tower with a little clay version of me. It was all like out of clay. That and is I, cute. I, yeah, I tweeted out pictures of that, and then I've had some people, like even Samaj has drawn me a piece of artwork too. You know, once uh, last year, but honestly, I don't get a lot of it. But I did get also. I also did get a musician, a band that's fans of mine, do a thrash metal song called "The Might of Magog." That is awesome. <laughs> so I, I did get that. That's pretty cool. <laughs> can make you fan art, but you don't, you don't tell a guy, what? I can make you fan art, but I don't know the guy. Guys, go draw Magog. Go check out his YouTube. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, it's, it's good times. I, 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 I finally reached uh, huh. my year mark on YouTube, and I have, what, 26,000 subscribers, so I figured it was time to maybe... Uh, See, now they're chilling out your YouTube. Oh, thank you. My YouTube. Yeah, I, I'm really sad that it's come down to YouTube or nothing. I mean, there's no other platforms. I am on BitChute Minds, but they just don't have the following. Yet. And they don't have monetization yet, sadly. Right. Well, Minds does. It's just a nightmare to figure out. But here's the thing. I don't even care about that because it's not like I make money off of monetization on YouTube. Oh, anyway. yeah, that's most true. Of, yeah, I'm most of my money comes thing from thing Patreon. Now. Yeah, yep. it's like, yeah, I mean, ads, ads kind of... Don't, yeah, ads you know, in I mean, chat. That's the new way Twitch is doing it, guys. <laughs> but uh, uh, that will probably happen on uh, on you. I guarantee they'll they'll find a way to put ads. In. Well, you heard about um, what was it? Buzzfeed attacking Super Chat, wanting YouTube to disable people's Super Chats. Oh yeah, dude. The the mainstream media is hurting so bad, and they are just willing to just go to war with new media, but they're, they're not going to win. Oh, somebody hell. else. Yeah. You know, somebody else will do it. If YouTube does, uh, does some shit like that, somebody else will pick up the, the ball and it will become more popular than YouTube. Uh, it just depends on how it's executed. Oh, Oh, we've got somebody going. We need Magog to tra- traverse the world of hentai and etchy. We can totally do a collab or I, I just ruined Magog. 50 shades <laughs> of Magog. Okay. That one's pretty good. Right. <laughs> Fuck you. Magog's already pretty loose. You should make I mean, that you should make that my a last Patreon um, my last video. My last video was like just like these witches, these like teen vogue oh, witches. Oh I saw that. I I was gonna watch that tonight yeah. when I was editing. There was a there was a lot of jokes in that where it's just like let's make magic together. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I have fun, you know, writing the comedy, and that's what, like, response videos is how I started, but I really want to take this to the next level. I'm still going to do response videos because people like them, but the main show is definitely going to 
hopefully grow to something a lot bigger. Um, that's that's the plan anyway. Well, as long as you don't rush it and you take it slow, I think you've got a chance. But what do uh, I know? I, I'm not a professional at this. Right, yeah. I, I, I under, I, I'm not either. I'm, But I, ha- I have a drive. I have a work ethic. I'm constantly working. Um, the new... M- the new side quest is coming out this month uh, with two new co-hosts. I got all new overlays and everything. Um, that took me 20 hours in Photoshop to do, you know. Um, it's, it's insane, you know. Like, we all going to have health bars and, and the, in the chat um, can, can kill us uh, with bad jokes. <laughs> it's going to definitely be an interesting stream. It's, it's definitely going to be a little bit more in-depth than the first season of side quest. So, I, I I'd be terrible if I told you I haven't actually watched SideQuest yet. That is fine. Not everybody watches live shows. I mean, we we never had the viewers that Magog gets on the main channel. Um, I had to move SideQuest too to a, a live stream channel, Magog Morskar live streams, because I got a lot of people. You know, a lot of my normal fans that just like Magog, they didn't care for the live show, even though I was in character. So I just decided to do a whole separate channel for live streams. And that's also where I do my out-of-character stuff. Um, Bipolar Panda is asking, so how will these episodes in the new set be different from the videos you make now? Um, a lot more interaction, a lot more room uh, for me to actually like walk around and stuff so I can do visual gags, you know? Um, I can also get like side characters like other actors and stuff in the local area that want to dress up in medieval clothing and come into Magog's store and you know like and Magog has interactions with them and stuff Um, so like the next stage of this show is to build it into something that's a little bit more interactive for the viewers you know they they can sit there and they can actually watch Magog you know blow himself up yeah, and, I'm okay with this idea. You know, you know, like the big, the bigger green screen window. You know, he has a big bay window instead of a little, a little corner window. So I can have, uh, you know, I can get, I can get Rufus properly animated and have the dragon come, you know, through the window and talk with Magog and, you know, fucking eat him and shit. <laughs> you know, I'm like, okay with this. It sounds better and better each with each new thing. Yeah, so you know, sorry. it's it's gonna, it, yeah, it's gonna be a lot more. I guess it's gonna be a lot more of a. Uh, you know, I can start doing a little bit more um, slapstick humor as well as like witty written humor, you know, because I, I can't do much sitting behind this table like the set in my apartment. I had to sell my couches to build this set. I mean, it's in my living room. And so basically all I can do is sit behind the table. I, I'm very limited in what I can do in my range of motion and my range of interaction, you know. Well, I mean, do you know how long until the set that you've got, well, the area you, you're building right now is going to take? How long that's going to be? About three months. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. By the end of the summer, I should be moved into the new studio unless something terrible happens. Well, I mean, <laughs> where you are, you don't have to worry about hurricanes or anything like that. We do have to worry about tornadoes. I am in Arkansas. Well, you're not and... in a trailer park. You'll be fine. Yeah, no, uh, but that puts a, you know, those kinds of storms put a stop on work. Like construction workers will not build my building. Oh yeah. If it's yeah. if it's you know down if it's monsooning out, yeah. and then there's there's also the extreme heat. A lot of construction kind of stops in the dead heat of summer. Yes, yeah, so you've got to get it done quick. Right, and then the the only other thing that could put an end to it, uh, put a kind of a hold on it, and extend the process, is um, the. Uh, the internet situation. I'm still trying to figure out how to get internet with the country. Avoid so, Comcast. Pretty much. Uh, <laughs> but I, I am willing to put down quite a bit of my own money to have them run lines from the road to my land. So, Because I know there's internet back in, back there. It's not so far out in the country that there's nothing. I mean, I'm like, I'm like my land is like 12 minutes from where I'm living now. Well, it's the not worst, that far. The worst of the worst, you, you could know? do like satellite or something. Satellite is incredibly expensive, and I've looked into it, and satellite has a terrible upload speed. See, that's what I've heard, because I've got a switch from Comcast, since they're, they now decided to give me a data cap, and it's, yeah. it's a nightmare. I like, I like Panda's idea. Tornado takes the whole village, drops it into Oz. There you go. There, should be, there, there could be a special in the future. <laughs> right? 
<laughs> Magog's behind the wizard curtain banging Dorothy. <laughs> yes, or he's trying to take the yellow brick road apart, thinking it's gold. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I want to see him now chase a bunch of munchkins. Yeah, Dorothy. Dorothy goes to kill the Wicked Witch of the West, and she shows up, and the Wicked Witch of the West is like folded in half, giving her and licking her own clit, fucking dead. And there's what happened here. And then Magog comes out, was like, "Really? She wasn't even that hard to def." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yellow Brick Road on sale now. <laughs> that could actually be a funny gag. Like, there's a yellow brick in Magog's shop, and people are like, "What's that? Some fucking road?" <laughs> it's a bit of road. You want to buy a bit of road? <laughs> These fuckers make roads out of gold. <laughs> I found a place with a bunch of hobbits. And they didn't even know how to defend themselves. I stole <laughs> their fucking road, man. I stole their road. Do you know anybody who knows how to steal a road? Me. Door-to-door <laughs> <laughs> -door road salesman. I like this idea. Magog's former job. <laughs> right. See, they're writing the jokes for you. <laughs> oh, I've got tons of jokes written already, and a lot of great interactions with Beard Barry, and he's going to become like Magog's unwilling assistant. He is fun on Twitter. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, Beard Barry is just fun all around. He's a good dude. And uh, he's kind of my business partner. I mean, he created his character after talking with me, and. Um, and we've just become fast friends, and um, you know, I'm I'm happy to see his channel growing too. And uh, he has good good time, you know. A uh, real imaginative guy, you know. His 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 shows are more in the world. Like he doesn't do response videos. He does stuff, you know. He does a lot of like comedy all by himself, you know. Yeah, but that can work. That'll be perfect for like Magog. will have the ultra serious person, so that'll be great. Yeah, you know, well, Beardy, what's great about Beardy's character is he's he thinks he's, like, super serious, beardbarian, barbarian savage who wants to kill everything, but he's also kind of dumb. So basically Magog. Right. But Magog, <laughs> Ma Magog, no, Magog is stupid, but not, like, no, Magog is smart, but he's stupid in the way that, like, he's too smart for his own good. That's the difference. He always gets himself in trouble. Right, he just gets himself into trouble all the fucking time. So the, the, the characters' juxtaposition are really great, you know? Yeah, now I want to come join in. Sounds like it'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm hoping it will be. And I really am hoping to have, you know, the fans partake, too. I've already had fans send me props. I've got guys who are like, I'm a blacksmith. I'll build you weapons. And I'm like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, like, yes, definitely. You know? It's good It's good stuff, you know. Like, I, I love the interaction with the fans. I love that people want to be a part of this. And, uh, uh, you know, I can't get over the fact that I kind of feel like a cult leader. And I'm, now I'm trying to build a village out in the middle of nowhere where all you're my not, cult You're not fans... helping your, your case here. I know, right? I'm, I, I, after this stream, I plan on going to buy a whole lot of Kool-Aid. No. Stop it. You need them alive for the money. I keep yeah. telling you people that. You need them alive for the money. Yeah, cult, cult leaders, except outside of Scientology, cult leaders aren't very good capitalists. They just they take really the money aren't. and work. They just take the money and then they kill all their cult, you know, cult, cult fans. And then it's like, now what do I do? <laughs> it's like stupid. What are you, stupid? What flavor Kool-Aid? Come on. There's only one flavor Kool-Aid. Fruit punch? Green. I guess that too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, wait, 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 is that slime made from uh, back when real Ghostbusters were around? Because I can totally get down with that one. Oh, no, yeah, definitely. High C's Ecto Cooler. Was oh, delicious. do you remember when they brought that back out? Oh, yeah. yeah. I was like, that well, was the, there goes my waistline. That was the only good thing about the new Ghostbusters film is they brought back Ecto Cooler as a right. promotional thing. I'm like, we can forgive you if you just, you know, leave that around forever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, just give us Ecto Cooler all the time stop stop making it one of those one of those things that you bring back like for for when every time there's a shitty ghostbusters movie made <laughs> no i no, i did not like that ghostbusters movie oh I, oh you should have seen my rage on twitter on that one especially because i got one of those types <laughs> that are like you should be happy that it's be about girls because there's never been female ghostbusters before and i'm like oh do you really want to start this with me yeah, I mean, they totally forgot the cartoon show. They totally forgot the video game. 
In the book, like, Janine is actually trained to use the uh, proton pack. She just doesn't because they're forty pounds to carry around. Right. You know, like I don't, I don't, I don't care for that that brand of comedy too. That Paul Feig, you know, bridesmaids type of comedy. Oh yeah, you know? I couldn't stand that. The whole I couldn't yeah. do it. I couldn't get ten minutes past the movie because my friend wanted to watch it. Well, tried to make me watch it after ten minutes. He's like, I'm gonna turn this off because you're gonna kill me. I'm like, I'm gonna do more than kill you. I'm gonna bring your ass back and then kill you again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, polar, uh, bipolar uh, bipolar Panda says, uh, have you considered that if you actually make this work, you will literally have built a settlement in the wilds of Arkansas? Name it Magog's Gate, maybe. <laughs> Do not help him, Panda. <laughs> yeah, that that's um, that's kind of an interesting thing, too. Like, oh, you know, it's the, the South is full of simple country folk and redneck types. And, no, you and, are you know, not allowed to make them part of your cult. I, I think it's pretty interesting if people like <laughs> driving down the road and all of a sudden there's like a medieval castle. What the fuck? You could pro- you know what you probably could do is uh, when you're not filming and stuff to help raise money if you actually get it all built just maybe do like a theme park type thing where people can come do a walkthrough and then just have the different actors just doing their thing just make people go what the fuck even more. Yeah yeah no like there was this idea I got some some of my fans to like rent it out to Ren Fairs and to LARP events when I'm not using it. That would film. be so much fun. You know, so people can come down to Morskar, you know, and go to Nightshade Village and have their Ren Fair and have jousting tournaments and archery and stuff like that. And then the LARP people can bash each other with foam swords. <laughs> that would be so much fun to watch. <laughs> I'm just I'm just picturing them doing it and the one idiot that tries to bring a rail sword and everyone's like, Man, you just ruined the fun. There's a medieval turret in Tennessee. Yeah, there you'd be surprised what's in the South. There was a French guy that came to Arkansas, a French businessman, millionaire, who loved Arkansas. He came to do business uh up in I think he came to do business with Walmart or something and just kind of fell in love with our country countryside, the Ozarks. And um decided to Build a medieval castle in I North Arkansas, but he because we didn't. Have, the only thing he didn't like about our countryside was have no history like he had in France. So, but he wanted to build this castle the way they built them back in medieval times. So he literally hired like twelve people, and they had to dress in tunics and only use like donkeys. They had to smith things by hand. They had to use like wood turrets to fucking lift stone like it was insane like he wanted it built the traditional way and it was going to take 20 years to build jeez he's a little insane right they got like the base of this thing done in like half of the fence tower and he ran out of money Aww. and so now it's just like a ruin sitting up in north Ar- a ruin of an ancient castle just half complete somebody should yeah. buy that and finish it it is actually up for sale, but nobody wants to buy it. Like, you know, like, like if he only he had just bulldozer. Oh, you know what you could do is you could probably rent that area out and use that as a set piece for Man. like a special or something. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't think I have the money. I think the last time I saw it for sale, I think it was a couple hundred thousand. Forget that. <laughs> for the for the land and the and the and that and the ruin of a castle built built on it. We shall buy it um, and make it Sinner Castle, everyone, as long as it's got AC, I'm happy. Let me let me look it up. Uh, Anything to get out of Florida. Right? <laughs> uh, it's the, yep, it's the Ozark Medieval Fortress, a project designed to construct an accurate replica of a 13th century French castle in, Le- in Lead Hill, Arkansas. Construction is carried out on the site, only materials and techniques appropriate to the 13th century. The ground was broken in 2009 with the expectation that the completion would take about 20 years. The project was inspired by French guy name, <laughs> <laughs> which is the first attempt to build a medieval castle started by Michel Guillaume. Ultra French. Yes. Two French citizens living in Arkansas offered to sell uh, part of their land for the building uh, of the similar fortification. He accepted and construction began in 2009. In 2010, it opened to the public so that people can see it being built. Additionally, starting in 2011, a collection of medieval siege weapons 
was to be on display. The site was open every day from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. In January 2012, the project closed indefinitely require, requiring a buyer or an investor. You would think that town would have invested because that's a really good business opportunity, but also insanely expensive. Yeah, the problem is nobody wanted the damn thing. Like, people really didn't go to it. Oh, that's a shame. See yeah. you, Durago. Thanks for stopping by, sweetie. Also, thank you for the sub, uh, Chitox, who I think is Spanish by the Ja Ja Ja. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I'm trying to see if they still have it for sale. Sin is afraid of becoming Florida woman. No, after today, just fuck my entire neighborhood. I'm done with this disgusting place. The more I, the longer I stay here, the more I hate people. Yeah, their last post on Facebook, 2012. Yeah, it did. Yeah, <laughs> very, very, very dead. Uh, let's see if it's for sale. We can go off from a buck fifty. Although I imagine having to pay for the land each year and stuff is going to also be insane. There's actually a uh, Scottish mansion that, or a mansion designed after a Scottish castle in Arkansas. They only want fifteen million for it. Okay, guys, we need to raise fifteen million. I need to be with. I need to be in a place that's like my people's. Let's do this. Holy, holy fuck! It's literally like sticking up above the tree line, like it has send a defensive me a pic tower. Send me a link. I will send you the link to this. This is fucking crazy. I've never even, I didn't even know this was in Arkansas. Google searches. I just, I'm putting it in the chat <laughs> so you totally can see it. I would totally be okay with this. I'm going to do it on there my it computer. Is. Right there. It's a, I, I put, look at that. Oh my mil, God, that's beautiful. $15 million Scottish Castle mansion in Fayetteville, Arkansas. I want. That's, that's I, real. I, I look me. at this and it's, I'm like, I want, and all I can think is this would never get cleaned. Fuck it. No. I, I would need naked, big-tittied maids constantly. No, you need small-tittied one. Big-titties would take would be complaining too much about their back hurting when they bend over. No, 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 no. You get the you get the small boob maids to do the heavy cleaning. The big titty <laughs> maids just like walk around with a feather duster. That's all they do. <laughs> That's and beautiful. they and every couple minutes they just drop the feather duster and go oops, and then bend over to. Do they do it, it with a really bad fake French accent? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh no wait Scottish you gotta have the Scottish accent yeah <laughs> ah, Scottish girls are big you might be able to find some if a woman needs to slap them damn it I'll give it to her <laughs> um, that is a but, yeah. really nice one though yeah but so far I do not see the Ozark medieval fortress for sale I think that it's just there yeah. it's just like it's just there. They're like, like, I can't afford I, that. I bet there's not even any security. I bet you can go up there, hop the fence, and go fucking walk around, you know? like. Oh, I'm sure if you contact uh, whatever real estate company might own it or the owners, they probably let you as long as you're careful, because I've seen that kind of thing before, like if you're going to be filming in the area. But well, I want it, this you, castle. If, if he is trying to sell it, what he'll probably do is, um, what he'll probably do is, is, is take he'll take offers yeah. if you contact them directly, but he's not putting it up for sale on a website or thing. It's not going to be on Zillow. Yeah, because you're going <laughs> to you get know? a lot of people that are going to try to make an offer just to screw with them, which that would that'd be terrible. You know, to be honest with you, though, this would be the... If I ever could make millions of dollars, I would build a fucking medieval castle for Magog's show. I'll take this Scottish Manson, thank you. As long as it's got AC, <laughs> which, God, that would be insanely expensive on its own. I just, I uh, like the design of it, but I would never go upstairs. That's the problem. <laughs> Bipolar Panda says, if it's not for sale and no one uses it, then maybe the Magogonites can siege their first castle. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> and they would Holy fail miserably, but it would be funny. Yep. Yeah. yeah, look at uh, uh, Next Menace says, uh, how big are these rooms? Inside, you'll find a relatively modest five-bedroom and four-and-a-half bath, but the interior spaces are designed to match the grandeur of the exterior. Then that means they're absolutely huge rooms. They're probably all a little bigger than master than most master bedrooms. Yeah, no, they're going to be massive, like, chambers, you know? <laughs> I wonder if it has a torture dungeon. I mean, if it's going to be a Scottish mansion, it's going to have to. 
I like that. A right. single family home. Yeah, no, that's more than a single family home. Uh yeah. Yeah, that's uh that's honestly I would build a castle to film in. That's the problem, is I'd still want to use it for the show. So if I built a castle, it would probably not have modern amenities. Or if it did, they'd be well hidden. You know, like you can't live in Arkansas without. Oh, ice. they did draw you. That's so cute. What's that? <laughs> Look, Hoshi Hearts drew you. Oh, if you're about nice. to kill someone. That's perfect. That's nice. That's nice, Hoshi Hearts. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that house. That can house at least several Mexican families. That's exactly where all of Mexico is going to go hiding when they jump the border. Yeah, what's the status of squatters in Arkansas? I have no idea, but I'm sure we have a lot of them. Uh, this is a pretty poor state, which is how come I could buy 12 and a half acres for 28,000. But I love it here. I mean, it's there's not a high population. There's a lot of, like, countryside. You can buy land cheap. The cost of living is low. Our gas prices are at, like, $2.17 a gallon. Like, oh, that's, you, you suck know? so bad. You it's know, almost like three it's, bucks here. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, like... The cost of living in Arkansas is real low, which is why I can do this show here. If I lived anywhere else, I would have to raise a lot more money. I would have to raise hundreds of thousands of dollars to do this show. Well, if you ever come to you know, Florida to do some shows, we've got like, um, I almost said St. Armas. We have a bunch of places that are like old Spanish fortresses, and we have an entire town that's like an old Spanish town from the settler days. You'd probably have fun filming there. Yeah, it could be. Um, I've been to some of those old places, and you know, because I'm, I'm actually I was born in Charleston, South Carolina. Not that far. And and uh, we'd go back every year to visit family and everything. And man, I've been to you know Middleton Place. I've been to all the plantations, Town Landing. I've been to the old Spanish church out in Charleston Landing. That's out in the middle of the fucking swamp, you know. <laughs> like they they have some cool shit down down on that side of the South because that's the colonial days right there. That was all the colonial South, you know. You come down to Florida to see some of the stuff here. I have actually never set foot in Florida. I had to. Any oh. family down there? You're breaking up. One moment. There we go. I think that fixed it. I hate Discord. <laughs> yep, that's what I tried to say in your. Yeah, in, I'll in, figure in out the DM Google me. thing next time. For some reason, Discord just like cuts voices out. I don't know why. Like. It happened to me and Matt when uh, me and Monday Matt were uh, were doing a few episodes for his channel uh, yesterday, and it was cutting out in and out. Yeah, I'll, I'll next uh, next time we stream together, I'll I'll figure out Google uh, Hangouts. I just really couldn't be bothered today to do it. So many swamps. No, that's in fine. South Carolina, so many swamps here too. Yep, and we have a shit ton of swamps here. In fact, Arkansas is the only state in the entire United States that grows rice. 40% 40, 40 of the nation's rice comes from Arkansas. Trying to find the place I was... Uh, darn it, where is it? Trying to find... Oh, there we go, St. Augustine. That's a place you could film a lot in. I'm trying to find pictures to show you. I'll just break and use the wiki. Because I'm lazy. Oh, that's an old Spanish fort. Oh, yeah, it's huge. I've been there a ton of times. And they have an entire town that's like the old style and all everything. It'd be great for filming. It would, but it's not quite medieval. No, this, but if Magog is, ever gets transported somewhere else. Yeah, this is Spanish colonialism. This is way past medieval times. Um, Shh, the but, fans won't know that. <laughs> yes, I've been to Fort Sumter too. Yep, anytime. And Sumter, South Carolina has a has a has a myth about a swamp monster. Uh, yeah, we even have a, a, an urban legend here in Arkansas called the Gator Man. And he's like <laughs> half gator, half man, and people claim they've seen him. He's like Bigfoot, you know? So he's like, uh, what do we have, the skunk ape, I think, here? Yeah, every every state has some sort of urban legend. It's pretty great. You know, you go out, you go out west, and there's like the Wendigo, you know? Oh, the a, Wendigo is so cool, though. Yeah, they get the cool yeah. one. And there goes the puppy again. Guys, calm down. It's okay. Joker, shut up. <laughs> 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 
He's just looking at me like, I will continue to bark. Right? What are you going to do? You got dogs. Ah, I can't wait to move out of this apartment, too. I'll finally be able to get an animal. There you go. Little, are you, what kind of animal are you looking at getting? Well, I know you talked about last time the chickens and the... Um, you were talking about getting chickens. No, I was talking about getting guinea fowl, but that was to keep the ticks down. Guinea fowl eat ticks. Um, no, I was that? talking about... I was talking about an actual pet. Like, I'm, I'm a dog guy, so I'd probably get a dog. Um, but... Um, yeah, I'd have guinea fowl on the land, run around and eat all the ticks and shit and chase off snakes. Guinea fowl, fuck up some snakes, man. I just yeah. I just picture in the middle of, like, one of the videos in the shop, just a guinea fowl just sitting on the table and Magog not even addressing it and everyone else is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you, does, do you even know what a guinea fowl looks like? Isn't I mean, it like they're... a chicken? No, they 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 look nothing like a chicken. They look a little bit more like a turkey, actually. Um, but they're tiny. Here, I'll post a I'll post a a, a Google search, so you can just go over to the images. There has to be big dog side. or little dog. Uh, that's tough because I grew up with small dogs. My fan of Yorkies. Oh, they're so cute. And I love Yorkies because they have hair, not fur, so they don't shed all over the fucking house. And I like that because I'm a very clean person and I don't like fucking hair everywhere. <laughs> but given that I'm Magog, I think Magog should have some sort of like large black dog that looks like a wolf or something. No, you know? no, give him a small one because it's funnier that way. Think about it. You'd expect him to have this big, big dog. But if he has an That is true. One... That is true. I could give me a little Yorkie and just Magog be like, come snuggles. Exactly. Off to adventure. <laughs> I have Cerberus. It's this itty bitty little dog with like the two other heads, like really fake heads. <laughs> but yeah, I just put in a Google link what uh, guinea fowl look like and you can see. Yeah, for yourself. they're so cute. They make a very strange sound. Look like they go whoop, 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 whoop. You know? Their bodies but are they... so. Oh, the babies are adorable. You know, what's funny about guinea fowl, too, is they're highly territorial. So the moment you buy a guinea fowl and then set it down on a piece of land, it never leaves. <laughs> it's like this 50-yard area is... So you don't have to worry about them, like, flying or running away. Like, they really do they don't. they fly? They... Yeah, they do. Well, they, they're a lot like turkeys. They don't fly, like, long distances and travel south for the winter and stuff. But they will fly between trees and shit. Yeah, they'll get they'll get off the ground for a little bit, huh. but they're they're more of a ground bird, a lot like um, a lot like quail or chickens. You know, they are a ground bird. They much prefer walking around just picking bugs out of the dirt. You know, like that's just who they are. You know. They're saying, uh, let's see, a wolfhound. No, see, that's too obvious. Even though it would be amazing, that would be way too yeah. obvious. He's got to have an itty bitty little dog. Yeah, wolfhounds are huge. I'd be happy to bring Miko, and you can use her. A little tiny the gosh is, hound. The thing is, too, I I do live in Arkansas, and it is fucking hot here for really heavy northern breeds to live. Yeah, like sure I, hair all the way. I've always I've always had a thing like three huskies. I'm like, you brought huskies to Arkansas? That's cruel. That jeez, they they got to be indoor dogs. They have to have air conditioning or something. They they got way too much hair. And fur to be in fucking Arkansas, you know, like yeah, people do that here all the time. Like we have neighbors that have the big, and they don't they don't shave them either. So when summer comes, it's just you can see the dog basically dying, especially during hurricanes I, when the power's out. However, even though I am a dog person, there is a cat that if I could get the werewolf cat, the werewolf cat, I would get the werewolf. Cat <laughs> They're saying dog. Chihuahua for sure for my dog. Like, I don't know if you've guys seen a werewolf cat, but they are fucking insane. <laughs> there we go. Hammock said it. Hairless cat. Get a hairless cat or the werewolf cat. That, I, I, I would get the werewolf cat before the hairless cat just because I don't want to rip off Dr. Evil. True, but do they have any were, uh, werewolf cat breeders here that you'd be able to get it without having to pay an insane price? No, they're insane price anyway. They're a very rare mixed breed. And uh, there's, like, only, like, three or four breeders in America. Yeah, well, aren't they still kind of newer? Because that would explain yeah, why. Yeah, they're a brand new breed. They were just, like, they were just fucking invented. <laughs> like, these people finally figured out how to breed kind of like a domestic house cat with a feral 
you know, a feral cat. Yeah. And what's weird about the the werewolf cat, the uh, they call them lycos, but um, they actually act more like dogs. They're pack animals. They actually prefer brothers and sisters. They actually like most cats are loners. Not these cats. They actually play like dogs. They actually act like dogs. They hunt like dogs. Well, they feral cats will, will typically try to stay in a gang if they can. From my, that's the, that's my the feral side of them. Yeah, that's the feral side of them. You know, most domestic cats are loners unless they grow up with a cat. But you bring it. Have you ever had a cat that you've had and it's been a, it's been an only cat mm-hmm. for like all its life and then you bring home another cat? What happens? Oh, yeah, I know. (laughs) They fucking hate each other. They have to be together when it comes to domestic cats. (laughs) Domestic cats are assholes. That's the the easiest way to describe it. What the fuck is a werewolf cat? Uh, Google. You have Google, Panda. I know you're not at work right now. Here's a link right there. Boom. There's a werewolf cat. uh, They're kind of a a rough-haired kind of feral looking breed. The last I checked, they're like $10,000 because they're such a rare breed. They are both cute and terrible. Oh God, imagine that thing showing up at night just sitting on your bedside. Yeah, like they, they, there's parts of their body has hair missing and they have a very coarse rough hair and big bright yellow and orange eyes. I could see that or I could see my dog having, you know, a Maine Coon, which again, it'd be probably way too hot in Arkansas for a Maine Coon. The thing is, like I, like I said, though, I'm not much of a cat person, so I would only get a werewolf cat for the show. I would put up with a cat, but I'm not a big cat person. Cats like me, don't get me wrong, but I just never really See, the more you're not a cat person, the more the cat is going to make you a cat person. That's what my always experiences. Everyone that I know that's like, I hate cats. They don't like me. My cat's like, well, buddy, you're going to be mine, whether you like it or not. Yeah, I mean, they sense that in people. You know, you keep your mink. See, mink coons are the cutest thing ever. I love them. I used to have one. I had one for twenty three years. She was, she was a, she hated everyone. It was amazing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I am looking at, and I might even, I might even get some wildlife um, that would look good in the village too, like maybe a cow, maybe <laughs> some horses. Wildlife, and you mention a cow. That's not what I, I was thinking, like deer and stuff like that, but a cow. No, they're, they're, no, they're already on my land. Oh, that's cool. You should do some filming of the land area, like of uh, the animals and stuff like that. That'll get you a uh, lot of views. No, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do that this weekend. I'm going to go up and take pictures and, and, and do a, uh, I'm going to film a walking tour of my property if I can get back in there <laughs> and uh, show people what, what the land looks like and where, where I'm going to be filming. Um, I just can't do it today because it's fucking pouring rain. Yeah, you know? we've got that same thing here. A miniature yeah, that, horse, that would be cool. A couple of miniature horses. See, the thing is, I don't know how to take care of farm animals. So See, I'd, I'd, have to come down, I, I'd have to come there and help you because I used to live on a farm. I had a horse for several years. And I don't think 12 and a half acres is big enough. Um, for a horse, it depends on how many you're getting. If you're getting one horse, I believe 12 and a half would be, be enough. But if you're getting a miniature horse, mm, probably. Depends the on is, the type you're getting. Well, you got to understand, too, it's not 12 and a half acres. Oh, yeah, because you also have the, the town it's, and everything like that. Yeah, it, it's, not, it's not just that. I mean, it's pure fucking woods. Like, I would have to clear You'd get the- most of that. 12 and a half acres to have a horse to have the grazing land. Horses don't like trotting through the fucking forest. You know? Like, they uh, really don't. Yeah, it depends on, well, we had a, um, oh, what are they called? The they're, It's like a Scottish and Welsh breed of horse with the with the really long fur on the, the hooves. They they love forests. We couldn't get our, we couldn't get the one at our, at our barn away from the forest areas. Yeah, I'm, I'm speaking strictly on horses here in Arkansas. They need space to open up and run. Yeah. You know, um, they, they, you can't just throw a horse in a woods. Just get a it, fake it, horse. No one will know the yeah. difference. Just have it pulled by somebody on a string. Uh, <laughs> Tats in the chat says, Magogni at ostrich. Yes, no, no, get a peacock. Get a peacock. Those things are crazy. If you can train it properly, they are hilariously great guard birds. Well, that, that's the thing with peacocks, too. They're a lot like guinea fowl. They're ground dwellers. And the moment you plop them down, they'll stay. There you go. They don't give a fuck. They don't give a fuck as long as I they have water. I think that would look cool in the, in the village is just out of nowhere. I, uh, um, 
a problem peacock is, walking around. Problem is, it's illegal to just to have a peacock. Oh, you guys have to have a permit and everything there. No, I mean, they're just, you're allowed to have any pet you want in Arkansas without any law if it's indigenous to Arkansas. Peacocks are not. Oh, I see. Yeah, I can see. Oh, that's actually I'm not. Really a, I'm not. I, I'm not allowed to import peacocks. I'll have to. You know. Yeah. It's they. They. They're at the zoo. But <laughs> other than that, yeah. You know, unless your area is is certified for like I guess um, rescue and stuff. But man, that sucks. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm actually glad that place has that law. I wish here we had that law because then we would stop having goddamn Nile crocodiles everywhere. Yeah, people importing exotic animals in the most states is actually illegal federally but um if it's indigenous to arkansas though you have it as a pet if you want to put it up with it. like i i have friends who have raccoons for pets i have a friend Aww. who had a had an opossum for a pet um they're fucking mean except for who raises them though that's what sucks do you guys have foxes there <laughs> oh yeah we have fennec foxes that you can i i know two fox breeders well why not get a fennec fox for the show because they are hard to take care of. Like, the two breeders I know are rescuers. That's why they have a license to breed them. But they're, um, they, can, they, can, they can rescue uh, wounded foxes and breed them and then release them into the wild. They can sell them as pets. It's legal because they are indigenous here. Problem is, foxes are incredibly difficult to raise as pets. They do not really... People think they're all cute and stuff, and they are. No, they're psycho. They are. But they are fucking mean, man. They will bite the shit out of you. Like, you have to constantly spend time with them if, if you want them to warm up to you. Like, you have to be at home all the time. It's kind of like ferrets. You can't just have one ferret. You have to have at least two because they're in constant need of of um, companionship. Well, you can always have um, your friends bring them. If you're going to use like them on set, have them for a shot or two and then have them you know, go. Then you can at least let everyone know about the rescue group and stuff. Yeah, I wouldn't own one as a pet, but I could have one, like, build, like, a wooden cage like you would have in Medieval. Like, a merchant has a fox in a cage for one of the scenes, you know? Like, that'd be cool. And they could just be up there temporarily. That's I want to make deals with people in the area. Be like, hey, I need a horse for this shot, so I'm going to go and talk to one of the guys that has, like, five horses and be like, can you uh, put on this medieval costume and ride a horse through town? <laughs> You know, like, I'll pay you 100 bucks to ride your horse through town dressed in medieval clothing. Um, you know, just, just to add some life to the village, you know. Yeah, um, I know. I, I, I'm sure a lot know. of groups will do, or a lot of people will do that because that will probably get their, like, businesses yeah. and stuff. Yeah, it's not just that. I know farmers would do that for bucks for beer. They just want an excuse to dress <laughs> up. Yeah, they'll just be like, yeah, fuck it. I'll, get... <laughs> I'll be on camera. You buy me a 12-pack. That's awesome. <laughs> You know, I, there's tons of cows and horses and deer and all kinds. We have wild boar here, too. Uh, I had a boar up on my land recently. He rooted up a fucking shit ton of trees. That's how I knew he was up there. So we put a game camera up there, you know, one of those wireless cams that you just fucking wrap around a tree, and it point, and it comes on anytime something moves in front of it. Yeah. And it records. And there was a, God, there was a good 10-point buck walked in front of that camera the other day. Um and I've seen the boar now because it activated that camera. And it has night vision, too, so if it's time, it'll still activate, you know, and show the big green picture, you know. Yeah, I've got a lot of wildlife up there. We got king snakes up there. My dad hates snakes, but he won't kill a king snake because the king snake eat other snakes. Like king snake, big black king snakes will chase off rattlesnakes and cottonmouths, and I don't want poisonous snakes up on my land, so I leave the king snakes alone. We had a king snake up there last time I walked around. He was about eight foot. I mean, Aww, he's huge. it sounds like a cutie. Oh, I like snakes. Huge, huge fucking snake. Um, the worst thing about Arkansas on bugs. Filming in the dead summer, mosquitoes, ticks, chiggers, spiders. I yeah, mean, you're going to have to be careful with that. Yeah. So when I go to film the sitcom, what I plan on doing is 30 episodes a year, and we're going to film in early spring before the bugs really come out. So basically, like the end of winter to early spring for three months, we're going to film every episode and then edit them and release them. That was the plan. Um, so that people can binge watch them. I was going to do kind of a Netflix thing where I'll do all 30 episodes and then the actors can all go home. And can we then get Magog to go Netflix and chill before them? Yeah. Right. And then, and, <laughs> and then what I was going to do is spend like two months 
editing, and then about middle to end of the summer, everybody would get 30 episodes. Boom. There you go. You know? They're on, asking on how a... big the trees the boar knocked down was. Oh, no. Yeah, no. The boar was, um, he was just knocking down southern pines because they're easy to knock down. They don't, they're, they don't have a root system. They just have a tap root. And that's what the boar wants. He wants that tap root. He wants to eat it, right? Yeah. So he was just knocking down a few little little uh, southern pine trees, which I'm getting rid of anyway. I hate I hate southern pines. They fucking grow wild. Like, I like how they look. I like how they smell, but they, they choke out everything. Like, I want some of uh, the hardwood trees that are on that property, I want to keep. So the guy cutting down the trees on the property, he's only knocking down pine. I'm keeping every oak, cedar, um, pretty much any hardwood shade tree that's on the property I'm keeping because they look beautiful. There but, you go. Uh, but the pine is fucking everywhere up there. He's just, just going to let the boar do his thing. He's doing free labor for you. <laughs> Actually, you know what the best thing to have if you're maintaining? If you never want to mow a lawn, buy goats. <laughs> they will eat the grass. They will eat everything from their head down. They'll eat ivy. They'll eat poison ivy. They'll eat everything. You won't have any underbrush in your forest if you let about 12 goats on your property and just let them roam. You're going you're gonna to get some goats for the... Uh, oh, property? yeah. No. Goats are a must because I'm clearing two acres, and I do have a big tractor with a uh, four-foot cutting deck on it, um, like a pull-behind cutting deck, you know, a finishing yeah. mower. That I'll use around my house, but I don't want... I don't want to mow two acres every week. <laughs> like that's that's how fast grass grows here. So I'm gonna buy some goats. The whole property. Oh my fruit. goat army! Yes. Um, so yeah, they shit everywhere, but they shit fucking pellets. You know, like it's not it's nothing. It's not like cow. It's not like a cow pucky. It's not like a cow patty, man. You step in that, you're like, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Bipolar's right. Free fertilizer. Yep, that's true too. Go, you know, goats. Goats just, just make sure that goats shit. don't don't come up behind you and <laughs> try to ruin your day. We used to have yeah, that they, problem at the farm. We had a, a couple of really asshole goats, and they just come up behind and ruin them, get them in the back. And I'm like, you little fucking dick, stop that. Yeah, you gotta show you gotta show them that. Like my friend has like three goats, and they're all male, so that they don't breed. He didn't want a bunch of baby goats, so the one with the biggest horns took over the pack. And every time he'd open up the fence, that thing would go at him. And one day he got tired of it and grabbed it by its horns and held its head to the ground. And it tried to struggle, and he just kept pinning it. And after that, it kind of calmed down. After that, it never attacked him again. Huh. I wish they had done that at the barn I worked at. Yeah. You got, you got to pin them fuckers. They, you have to show them you're the fucking, you're the fucking head elk. You're the head goat. <laughs> you got you to gotta do it. After that, too, it would follow him around. And, of course, all the, other goats, all the other goats would follow it. So he had like a pack of goats just following him. <laughs> See, he's already got his army. He's already beaten yep. you out. <laughs> but with three goats, he was able to never mow uh, his one and a half acres again with just three goats. He only had three goats for an acre and a half. Not bad. They would. They ate everything. The only thing you got to do is build a house for the winter, like some sort of little shed that they can bundle up in, and you got to put hay down in the winter because there's nothing to eat because everything dies, you know. See, the parks, of, the, the parks of where uh, in Florida is, they, we never had to worry about the hay. We did it anyway, you know, just because they would keep stealing it from the horses anyway. But we yeah. never had to do it. But we always ended up doing it because they get into the, sh they get into the um, hay loft. We don't know how. They'd end up up there and they'd eat it. And we'd just be like, I, the hell did they get up there? Uh, goats or climbers. Oh, yeah. It was, it's funny as hell, too, to watch them. It's like. Is anyone going to go up and get them? No, they can have it. There's a reason why billy goats will traverse the Rocky Mountains. All You're like, how the fuck you get up there? <laughs> like, oh, no, no. Goats won't, won't only steal from horses. I've watched a goat chase a horse. It didn't end up well for the goat, but it tried. Here's yeah. the thing. Goat uh, uh, horses love smaller animals as pets. So if you, it, it's actually really healthy for a horse's mental state to have a goat yeah but this goat kept bucking it because it was a 17 hand horse and it, the goat for whatever reason kept bucking at it so or well head butting it some of the horse was just like no what fuck this and kicked it in the head i'm just like all right so yeah. um you guys deal with your own problems i'm not going in that in that area and dealing with that you're on your yeah, own goatee 
that goat just wanted to play, but it was picking a fight with something bigger than it. Oh, yeah. You know? See, that's how goats play. See, that's the thing. Like, I've seen, like, don't get me wrong. I don't know how to take care of these animals because I was never raised on a farm, but my grandfather owned them. And I, every time we went to West Virginia, you know, I learned a lot about animals by visiting my grandma and grandpa. But that doesn't mean I learned enough to feel safe <laughs> taking care of these fucking things. But I learned what they like and what they don't like and how to take care of them. My my grandpa always had a goat, and it would follow them horses around, and the horses would snuggle with them and shit. Like, horses love small... They love dogs, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, they, yeah. You know, they, they love small animals to just kind of, like... Horses are like, you're cute. I'll keep you. <laughs> <laughs> we, <laughs> you had, um, we had a, our, a chihuahua when we had our horse... And when we brought it, we used to bring him along, and the one time our horse accidentally kicked him, and he didn't mean to, he got scared, that our, my horse just freaked out, lowered her head, she just so upset until the dog came over and licked her. Yep. Just absolutely looked like somebody had shot her best friend. She was so upset by that. Yep. It's actually, like I said, it's really good for the mental health of horses to have a dog or a goat or some other small animal that it can, like, you're mine. <laughs> my my grandpa's dog would run out there and fucking chase the cows into a circle. He'd go round the cows up. That dog would go round the damn cows up and they go in the barn. Horses That's are social it. animals. Yeah, they are. I miss yeah, my horse. Social. I had one for six years and she was actually the granddaughter of Secretariat. We had no idea how much she was worth when we got her. Sec- Secretariat has a lot of grandchildren. Oh, yeah. She was we got we paid a thousand for her and apparently she was worth eight or nine thousand. What thirty yeah. really? Well she was yeah. older. She was um Oh she was she was she, she was, was out a, of her prime. She well she was, she, was, she, was still, she was still in her prime. She was a former racehorse herself and stuff like that, but um she Former could still means be she was out of her prime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. That's what out of prime means. They're they're breeders now, but they're not yeah. racers. I mean, she's, she's, out of, yeah. she's, she, she's out of her racing prime. Yeah, she was about three years away out of her racing prime. They just didn't race her anymore because they couldn't afford her. But right. you could definitely tell she was a racehorse, especially because she also did Western. And every time we'd walk around cows and stuff, man, that horse would freak out and try to bring them around. And it was the funniest thing. She'd buck people off. She never did that to me. She was always sweet to me. But if you had an experienced rider on, man, she would show them the business. You know, it's really weird about, like, breeds. Like, human beings have been, like, breeding dogs to do specific things for so many generations that it is now part of their genetic code. So, like, shepherds, like, automatically know what to do with sheep. You don't have to train them. Like, it's really weird. Sheep dogs, like, if all the humans died, sheep dogs would still be out rounding up sheep. Like, it's just part of their genetics. Like, they just fucking do it. It's weird. My grandpa bought a sheepdog, and it would run out there and fucking just, like, he didn't train it or anything. It just knew what to do. That it is just fucking, it, it fucking knew what to do. It just ran out there and fucking rounded up so it could go into the barn and shear them. Like, it kept them in a circle. It kept them from wandering off. It just would sit there and fucking look over the sheep. That's what they were fucking designed to do. That's what we bred them to do for generations. Good. <laughs> Good dog. Yorkies were bred to go down rabbit holes and chase rabbits out for hunters. Yeah, I'm finding out uh, Dosh hounds are like that because, God, that dog can find anything. Yep. I might not see something for like a year or two. She comes up out of like under my bed or something, and boom, she's got something. I'm like, the hell did you find that? Dogs are smart. That's why I like dogs. See, cats cats are smart, but they only care about themselves, really. Like Certain they, cats. They, Main Coons you know, actually care about their owners, but that's just from my I mean, my cats care about their owners, but only to a certain extent. Like, well, I've, I've seen people fucking, like, like die, like, pass away, and the cat's just like, eh, who's going to feed me now? But, a, a, but, a, but, a, but then somebody passes away of old age, and the dog is by the bed crying. You know, like, you know, it's like, they know. You know, but cats are like, man, where's my food? <laughs> like... <laughs> See, I, I had a cat when I, cause I had a cat for 23 years, and she was my guard cat. She would sit at the door of my room every night to protect me, and like if anyone came near me, she full on attacked. I remember one day I was crying. Again, I was a little kid at that time. I don't even remember what happened. All you hear from downstairs, my mom scream. She goes, "Your cat just attacked me, and she won't stop." 
Yep. I, I no, swear I she might have been half dog. She just mu must have been half dog. That can be. The, the other reason I want a dog and want a decent sized dog, even though I like I like all breeds of dogs. I love dogs, but <clears throat> and I'm I'm comfortable with my masculinity. If I bought a damn Yorkie, I would not feel emasculated at all. If you bought a Yorkie, you would have to put the cute little bows in its hair. Yep. See, there we go. There we go, guys. We found the perfect man. He's willing to if do it. it. If it's a it's a if it's a girl. Which I've always grown <laughs> yeah, don't up with. Torture, girls. Don't torture the male dog by doing yeah. that. No, but uh, I would also like a bigger dog because I am going to be living in the country and they have a tendency to be better guard dogs and things that people are more afraid of. You know, we get those redneck meth heads every now and again will cut across country and, and, and rob people and shit. And, you know, so I'm going to have a hell of a security system out there and I want a big fucking dog that'll be like, <laughs> and anybody nearby will go, oh, what, what I mean, kind of big dog are you thinking of? Like a shep like a Belgian Shepherd or? Yeah, probably a Shepherd. Um, my brother has a German Shepherd, Sasha, and she is just brilliant. I mean, they learn fast. They're mm -hmm. easy to train. They're great dogs, and they will fuck somebody up if you tell them to. Yeah, you train <laughs> them. You train them to attack, and they 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 will lock that fucking jaw right up. There there is a reason why the police use German Shepherds over every other dog. There's I mean, that and they'll reason. know if there's any Jews around. That I mean, too. what? <laughs> but uh, that that was definitely, like, that's definitely kind of on my mind, but I labs. Yeah, I like, but labs are kind and I love labs to death, but they're kind of stupid. Well, they're retrievers, and that's why I like them. Yeah, they're great. I, I had a black lab. Like I said, I love them. At the same time, sometimes you're just like, ain't right, are you? <laughs> Yeah, maybe not the smartest cookies in the bunch, but they will. They're incredibly good guard dogs, and they are easy to train. You know, um, and the reason I like the idea of a retriever is because I do like quail hunting, and I do plan on getting some quail on the land. A part of the land is for my family and me to shoot guns. I am cutting down a hundred yard foot, a uh, hundred yard length of tree, and creating a a berm at the end for a gun range. Ooh, that sounds like fun. I might have to bring my guns and come shooting. Because I own a lot of guns, and I like shooting. Mm -hmm. And I like archery, too. Just, I have just any... keep flirting a little more. <laughs> yep, yeah, no, I, just, I love it. I've only man. got two I... right now, but I'm in a little place, so I can't get too many more. I have 30? Jesus, man. I know guys that would go gay for you just for the guns. Yeah, I got ak 47 1911s, got a 357 Magnum snub nose, I've got a couple 38s, I've got a couple 9 mils, I got a 6 hour 9 mil Beretta 9 mil, uh, I've got 45, uh, Remington 45, I've got a couple Remington shotguns, I've got a Browning 308 hunting rifle, I've got a couple others that I can't, I got a couple sidekick ankle, <laughs> ankle guns. You know, good good for uh, concealed carry, you know? Well, he's um, going to take over Arkansas before he goes after an African nation. You don't, you don't, you don't live in Arkansas and, and not own guns, really. I mean, I, <laughs> you know, I know too many people that just fucking own guns, you know, like, especially if you, you, you're, you're a gun nut. Now, don't get me wrong, there's probably city very little guns, but shit. There's nothing more fun than just stepping out your back door and going, boom, 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 boom. Ah, I love the smell of gunpowder in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Bring my little Taurus and my little um, thirty-eight special to come shooting. Yeah, I'm I want to get a shotgun, Tauruses. but again, it's just too small of an area. And if, if it's too much known in this where I live right now that I have guns, they're going to try to break in to take them. Yeah, I have a, I, I have a Winchester 3030 and two Henrys, too. I love lever actions. They're asking uh, uh, how pricey is ammo there, and do you make your own? I pack my own shotgun shells, but I don't pack bullets because bullets are cheap for me. Like, I don't see the point because I can buy them dirt cheap because the Remington ammo factory is here in Arkansas. And I have friends who work there, and they get, they get, their, they get their fucking discount. They get to walk into the, to the factory store and buy. I bought 2,000 rounds of twenty two long rifle for my Henry for... 40 bucks. Fuck you. 
Uh, I got a thousand rounds for forty dollars, friend. <laughs> I could get about five hundred rounds of like, you know, um, three oh eight. I could get about five hundred rounds for a hundred bucks. Oh shit! I'm moving to Arkansas. Yeah, you know, uh, I, I have like two hundred. Let's see, I got two hundred bullets here. It was nearly fifty bucks. I have a judge too. Yeah. Epidemic shot says I have a judge that's going to shoot. That is a fun gun to shoot. That thing, sh that thing holds uh, forty five. <laughs> you just got your entire army ready to move to Arkansas just yeah. for the guns now. Yeah, I got, I got a judge. I got a judge, and it shoots, uh, it shoots three ten shotgun shells or forty fives. <laughs> like, Do you modify your guns, a... or you don't mess with them? Uh, it depends on the gun. I modified my AR fifteens, um, and I modified my AK forty seven with a. Uh, with a thumb grip stock, wood stock, instead of a handle Ooh. and a trigger, so you can hold it better up against your shoulder. Ooh, that one sounds like fun. Yeah. See, now you're going to make them love you even more. That's an AK-47, sir, the preferred weapon of our enemy. It makes a distinctive sound when fired at us, sir. <laughs> if anybody can tell me what movie that's from, you win points for me. Ah, oh, Panther piss. <laughs> Come on. Give Somebody a minute. It takes a movie. moment. I think um, even with the low latency, Twitch still has like an 8 or 10 second delay. There we not go. Full, not full metal jacket. Nope. But I mean, they're starting to answer. Not Forrest Gump. <laughs> Come on. He didn't say he, won't, he that life is like a box of chocolates. Nope. It's the AK-47, the preferred weapon of our enemy. It makes a distinctive sound when fired at us. <laughs> it's not Patton, I know that. No. I'll give you a hint, it is a Clint Eastwood. Rambo. Nope. nope. No. Clint nope. Eastwood, guys. Not the good, the bad, and the ugly. No, definitely not. I immediately go to Cowboys. I'm terrible. <laughs> well, he was well known for his Cowboy movies. Yeah, but he, uh, that's because he was good. Nope. Not Kelly's heroes. Heartbreak Ridge. Bipolar got it. Heartbreak Ridge. Yeah, it's a shame you can't do any videos on your guns, because we already know what YouTube would do to you. <laughs> yep. I, I would open up an entire separate channel just to fucking shoot guns. I really would. You could just take um, them to porn sites like a lot of people are doing. Yeah, it's like fucking YouTube shutting down gun channels pissing me off. Yeah, it's yeah. insane, especially because the ones they're picking specifically are like the educational ones, and it's like, yeah, those are the ones you don't want to mess with. Yeah, like Hickok 45 was a let's get a gun, and he described what it is and how it was built and when it was built and all this and that, and he'd go out and shoot watermelons. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, uh, you learned a lot about gun safety, too. I'm, I'm ex-military. I'm a I fought in Iraq. Um, I'm a disabled vet, and I love my fucking guns. And I am very safe about my guns, though. Like a lot of people don't realize how how big of a stickler I am. A lot of my a lot of my Magog guys say, "Oh, I want to come get drunk and shoot guns." No, we no, don't get drunk and shoot guns. No. We don't do that. We shoot guns and then we get drunk once the guns are safely put away. There you go. That. We don't do that. I, I run my firing range like a proper firing range. You you don't point that barrel anywhere but down range. <laughs> yeah, we've had a few retards on that shit at the gun range I go to and the owners of it and the owners like you get the fuck out right now. No, you, you you clear your barrels at the clearing barrel, you clear your chamber at the clearing barrel, you fucking make sure that gun is empty before you pull it off the line. Period. Yeah, but you know people aren't that safe, which is a problem, which is actually why we need the the uh gun channels, but you know. Why? Why teach and you know make thing teach people how to do stuff the proper way? Well, that because because pe people on especially on the progressive left they don't want guns at all. So, yes, trigger trigger discipline is very essential. You don't oh yeah, they up. hammered that yeah. right into us you, when I went to military school. Yeah, you don't put your finger on that trigger until you're ready to shoot. Until you literally are aiming and ready to, you keep your forefinger pointed forward. Over the trigger guard. Not on the trigger. And you squeeze a trigger. You don't pull it. 
<laughs> even I make that mistake. <laughs> I even know that I even know the difference between a clip and a magazine. A lot of people don't because movies are just like I need a clip, and they actually are given a magazine. Well, they yeah, and you know the one person on set that actually knows what it is is just wincing in the background. Yeah, yeah, because it's just a cooler word to say, I guess. <laughs> you know. So, I like that. They don't want you to have any weapons because slaves should not have weapons. We've seen what happened yep. during World War II. Yep, my dad liked to say if you aim at it, at something, you better be ready to shoot it. That's pretty oh, much yeah. it. Yep. No, I love guns and I, I love archery too. I English longbow. I can't wait to shoot. See, I've never done some... archery, but I've always wanted to do it. I've also heard it's like a, it's really painful at first, where you like your shoulders and stuff when you're first learning it. It depends on the draw weight of the bow. It depends. It really does. It depends on the draw weight of the bow. My English longbow, uh, with the with the with it rated right now, I think I only have eighty pound draw. So no, seventy pound draw. That's not too bad. You got to have a little upper body strength, but you know, uh, I, if I bought a tighter string for it, it would um, it would definitely uh, bend it a lot more and, and create draw hmm. and so like that that like my the current draw string on on my uh the current bow string on my english longbow is a 70 pound draw which is it, it's enough for target you know i'm not hunting with it it's more for fun yeah you know to to, to handle a bow like like they used to none of, none of that fancy <laughs> holy systems and shit like that don't get me wrong Com an amazing invention, but I just feel a little bit more organic holding a classic, you know, medieval longbow, you know. <laughs> See, I, I want to come try that. I've always wanted to try archery. My um, <clears throat> One of our co-hosts, one of my co-hosts on my channel is a big into archery and shooting and stuff, and he keeps telling me i got to come to Texas and do archery with him. I'm like, no, because you try to aim the arrow at me by te when you're teaching me. He's like, only once or twice. Depends on how much you yeah. piss me off during the day. I'm like, hmm. Archery really is a great hobby because it teaches you posture, discipline, you know, aim. It helps your eyesight. I mean, archery is just kind of fun. You don't have to actually kill anything. You can just target shoot, and it's just it's addictive, man. You know? Yeah. Like, like that's what a lot of people like who they just don't can get it. You know? I I remember when I was doing um, fencing because it's one of the things they offered in my school. Uh, one of our t our teacher was also he also did archery and he said I'd be really good at archery because of my posture with fencing and stuff like that. Because you kind of have yeah. to have a similar stance, which is odd if you think about it. At the same time, I can kind of understand it because I've seen people doing archery. Right. Uh, they used to teach archery in fucking high school, man. Yeah, we were supposed to get yeah. it in our high school and they never were able to get the funds and stuff because we it was even though it was a military academy, it was like the first few years of it, so they couldn't get all the stuff they wanted built. Right. No, like, uh, like they stopped doing it here because, you know, schools have become like namby-pamby, take care of fucking uh. kids, give them fucking helmets. <laughs> they really do spoil children. Like, oh, I have a friend God, yeah. here, I have a friend here who has like a six-year-old, and they just, they just had like a graduation from like the fifth to the sixth grade. Yeah, but they've I'm had that for years, though. Yeah, but listen to this. This is what they did in our town, okay, the town that I live in, because we got a bunch of wealthy motherfuckers here who just, like, pamper their fucking kids. The graduation prom thing was the Oscars. What? So, so they rolled out this red carpet. All the kids got to ride in a limo. They had paparazzi. Like, all the parents were acting like paparazzi. They had, like, a news announcer with, like, a microphone kids when they step out of their limos there was like these little gold Oscar statues for like class president and like teachers best teachers aide and like uh, best hall monitor you know like whatever little job the kids had and they all got little Oscars for them and they got to dress up in really fancy clothing and little tuxes and and they got they got fucking paparazzi taking their pictures and riding in a limo I didn't get to ride in a limo in a fucking six Jesus, they're not going to remember riding in a limo when they're six. Like, they were like, it's just, it's for the kids, it's so cute. It's and not for the fucking kids. I, I love kids, I love my nephews, I love, I love the kids that, you know, all my nephews and nieces, 
even though they're not blood, you know, I only have two nephews that are blood related, my brother's kids, but I call all of my friends kids because I've known my friends since elementary, you know, like I roll with the same people oh, yeah. all my life, you know, uh, so like my friends are my brothers, you know, and, and they had kids, so I call them my nieces and nephews and I'm kind of cute to do something special, but That's the insane. other side of my... The other side of my brain was like, you spoiled little brats. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. I was like, holy crap. Like, you know what I got between the fifth and sixth grade? A report card that said I uh, I passed. That's all I got. I just showed up for class the next year. That's all I did. Like, you don't have to have a special event every time some kid moves from the fourth to the fifth grade. Like, you don't have to fucking do it. They have it where, like, kids graduate from kindergarten. You, it's not graduate at all. You didn't eat all the crowns. Congratulations. <laughs> you didn't become even more retarded. Here's your <laughs> diploma. Like, I think we did maybe, I know we did a high school graduation at uh, a big place here, but that's high school. I think we had a middle school. No, we didn't even have a middle school one. You know what? You know what's fucking crazy? My youngest nephew, Xander. He is woke as fuck now. Oh, have you? Are you planning on ruining him? And it, it wasn't because of me. It wasn't because my brother's actually pretty liberal. It's because he got cancer. Oh, poor thing. Is he going to be he okay? Got, he, yeah, he had a brain tumor, and they operated, and, and then he went through a year of chemo, and he just finished his last chemo section se- session. He is now in remission. Good. Officially in remission. No making but fun of the kid, guys. Yeah, he is like 12 years old. But now, because of he went through that like really terrifying experience, when stupid shit happens at his school, he's like, that's dumb. Oh, bless <laughs> like, his you know, heart. I love him. Like, like, like Xander, man, he straight up calls out bullshit now. And he just like, he has a whole new like little perspective on life. And you can tell it like you could tell it changed him because he was a, and he's still a happy go lucky kid. He loves everything. He loves life. Um, when the, when the uh, make a wish foundation came, he asked for a kitty. Like he could have he met the Broncos, but he wanted a, he wanted a Scottish, what are they called? Scottish dwarf ear. Oh cat. yeah. The, the, uh, yeah. The little, the ear ones. Oh, yeah. So, so make a wish foundation spent like 10 grand to get him like a cat with the box and the, bed and the toys and the food he got like a year supply of fucking cat food oh like like they went all out for him and he was just like after after he went through chemo and he lost all his hair and all that stuff happened and now he's bounced back but at the same time you can tell he's changed he'll see some crazy shit and he's just like he's just like he's like 12 years old and some other kid at school do something or say something and then start crying and xander will be like you don't know hard times (laughs) <laughs> you you no, need to have you need to have him on Magog. He needs to be like the most serious character. He looks like a little me too. He's uh, he, he, he well, it's, it's he's me and my brother look very similar. We're, we come there. From you go, the itty bitty little Magog. Who wants so, to see itty bitty little Magog? So, yeah, he has he has platinum blonde hair and bright blue Aww. eyes, just like me. You know, so like he 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 definitely looks like me and my brother and my my side of the family. You know, now the oldest Sean, my oldest nephew, he definitely took after my brother's wife he has there you go young prince xander there we go yeah Yeah, like oh yeah he loved it and and i i have nothing but absolute appreciation for arkansas children's hospital it's one of the best in the nation it was actually rated one of the top 10 in the world if it wasn't for arkansas children's hospital uh xander could have died like he had a Walnut-sized brain tumor. Oh, poor thing. Yeah, like they had to go in through his neck because it was so close to the base of his spine to to remove it. And they so like to get it out, all of it. Yeah, they got it all out. Yeah, it's amazing. It's because we caught it early. He had large cell lymphoma, and that can manifest very quickly and spread throughout the whole body. The problem is that it. Most of the time, the reason it kills so many elderly people and young people usually doesn't happen. Like B cell lymphoma is a really weird cancer. It doesn't happen in uh, young adults to middle age. 
it really only goes after like old people and really young kids. And the reason it kills is because the tumors form and they're if they're in any other part of the body, it's hard to even know they're there until it's too late. Right? Yeah. But because his formed on his brain and it started like we started noticing at Christmas of twenty sixteen that he like he couldn't control his tongue. Like he tried to chew and he'd bite his tongue. And when he was talking, his tongue would come out of his mouth. And his face was going numb. And so we took him to the doctor. And if it wasn't for the fact that it I caught it that early. That's amazing. My 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 aunt had a um tumor that was growing for twenty years in her brain. And they, we have no idea how the hell they never caught it until then. Um, sadly, when they removed it, it ended up spreading cancer throughout her entire body. But yep, it's that kind of shit is insane when you think about it. Yeah, and uh, it, it was it was a very scary time for my family. I had just started my channel when he got diagnosed, and I was basically just going to school, doing Magog, and. Any money I was raising, I was giving to other to help pay for the bills. Well, you know, let's hope like, we can raise the money to build your um, town. Because if you can do that, you could probably do something for the hospital, like for the kids to come, like during Christmas oh, and stuff. Yeah. And make it a Christmas town. Have Magog dress as Santa. What? Yeah, I'm yeah. Santa. <laughs> yeah, no, I'd, I'd I'd love to to get you know to do something for Arkansas Children's Hospital. I'd love to I'd love to pay them back for saving my nephew's life and. A good thing did come out of it too. My my brother's wife, um, you know, the my nephew's mother, uh, is uh, just like finished her nursing, and because she was at Children's Hospital every day with Xander, when he was doing his chemo, they were there every month for a week. You know, he had to stay for a week at every month. Wow! And because she was there, she cultivated a lot with the people there. Everybody loved him. He was so wonderful people loved him and by the time it was all over um and my brother's wife graduated and arkansas children's hospital hired her oh that's fantastic so now, so now now she is a nurse in the children's cancer oh that's that great her, that that her own son was in so like now she's got a great job and she's working with children and she's working with cancer children and stuff and that that was just a that was just a great thing to kind of come out of it you know it sounds like that's like a fantastic job and at the same time probably one of the most heartbreaking yeah no she she definitely goes through some shit because some of them not gonna survive period yeah. you know it's just it is what it is and so she has to she has to sometimes you know watch them die you know we we should move off this subject only because we're gonna make everyone cry we we don't want to do that yeah. but at the end of the day like what, what the reason i up with Xander has because they had to go in through his neck he has this scar like someone slit his throat <laughs> and he was really self-conscious about it until Aww. I was until I was talking to him and I was like no dude you look like a pirate <laughs> and he loves pirates his favorite video game while was um Assassin's Creed Black Flag you gonna have him be a little pirate and so he just started, like, wearing it with pride after his Uncle Buck told him, you look like a pirate. Chicks dig scars, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> That's so great. Yep. So, like, it, it, was, it, was really, it was really close. Like I said, if that tumor had formed, like, on his liver or on his lung, it, we would have never known until it was too late. I'm, so. I'm glad he survived and... It, he's a little woke, buddy. Well, the good woke. <laughs> right, yeah. And it is kind of funny because sometimes he'll just like, he get, it, it grew him up a little faster than he so that, Somebody goes, so sucks. he became like Batman, but with parents. Yes, exactly. <laughs> My parents are, uh, you know, like, why did you become a superhero? Did your parents get murdered in front of you? No, my parents are fine. <laughs> and they're at home right now, actually. Thank you for reminding me. I have to call my mother. There you I go. To, I just wanted to beat your fucking ass, you criminal. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, I mean, and everything's great. He's getting back into his taekwondo and his hair grew back, and he's he's getting back into swimming. He loves swimming and, um, you know, all that all that stuff, you know. Like, so, you know, it, it was just a 2017 was a, a, a very – I didn't talk about it a lot. 
you know. Um, but oh, now yeah. that it's all kind of over, so a lot of people watching Magog for the past year probably didn't even know all that shit was happening with my family while I was filming these comedy skits, you know, and stuff. But uh, there's also kind of a reason why I don't crack a lot of cancer jokes. I guess it's more of a personal thing. Yeah, and, it's, yeah, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> that's just a poor taste. Uh, I do now and again where I'm just like you're. You know, but I try not to because I, I, it's not that I hate those jokes. It's, I, it's more I, of an I, out uh, of respect thing. You no, know, it's, 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 a, it's more of, I don't want to tempt the gods. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's really what it is because I'm a free speech advocate. I, I, I do not get offended by jokes. Even if somebody cracks cancer jokes in the chat right now about my nephew, I'm not going to get offended. Everybody has a right to speak. I might think you're an asshole, but, um, <laughs> Um, but I, I just personally don't do it because I don't want to, like, tempt fate or something, you know? Like, Karma and all that jazz. Yeah, he, I know it's a silly superstition, but he did answer chemo finally. And just, I think, a month ago, he got the heart valve out because that's how they do the chemo. They had to put a, a stint into his heart so that the chemo could go, go directly into his bloodstream. Oh. So he had this hole in his chest with a tube, and he had to walk around with it, and he had to tape it down and put a put a cap on it and you have to be really careful when you take showers you can't get water in it you know because it'll go the water will go directly into your heart you know and so he had to he had to have that thing sticking out of his chest for a year you know and he finally got it removed and and he's just so happy that it's done you know well, that is absolutely and there's no chance like he's it's not gonna the cancer won't be coming back or anything like that the longer he goes the higher the chance that it will never come back because that's the good thing with B-cell lymphoma is that once it's cured, it usually stays cured. Good. And so the next five <laughs> years is going to be really But in five years, the chances of him actually getting cancer again will be like 1%. Here's the most important question. Did you guys throw him a party that was pirate-themed? Of course. There we go. There we go, guys. We got the real answer. See, he's the one that's allowed to get spoiled rotten, at least for the next five years. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so, like, it is it is nice that he got the cancer that you come back. And that's that's, <laughs> that's not something you normally hear. It is nice he got the cancer because it broke I mean, you. It, 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 it dropped you right there as you said that. And he's just like <laughs> No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. Not damn Discord. No, it's it's you gotta find the silver lining in there. Oh Especially yeah, of course. Cancer. As long he's, as he, he kept a positive yeah. attitude, everyone else should too. Yeah. If you're gonna get cancer, hope for the cancer that once it's cured it comes back. Like that there are certain cancers that once it's cured it's gone. Like that's good. <laughs> It's kind of like STDs. If See, you're going to get an STD, get it takes a pill and you're done. You know, like sometimes you just got to look at the silver lining. See, not only did he beat cancer, but he got the world's cutest kitten. Yes. That he can he also breed for a ton of money. That kid knew what he was doing. I don't know, man. He could <laughs> ask, but he's a huge Broncos fan. Yeah, and but I mean, he could have he could have met John Elway. He could have done some. He wanted that, something to snuggle. But he. Uh, like, when he asked for a cat, we were like, buddy, we'll buy you a cat. <laughs> this is the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Do you want to meet Batman? <laughs> or do you want a cat? <laughs> you know, like, I, 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 we will call up Johnny Depp. He will show up as Jack Sparrow. <laughs> you know, like, they, they the Make-A-Wish Foundation. You already know Captain Barbosa. So I'll show up in full costume. You know, the, the Make-A-Wish Foundation will do some crazy shit for these kids, you know? Oh, yeah. I, I've heard the stories, and I, I've gotten to work with them and stuff, because we had, we had one Make-A-Wish kid here um, who wanted to do an animal rescue thing, you know, with animal rescue people, and we ended up bringing him along. It was, it was we set everything up, so it was nothing horrific the kid would see, but they thought they rescued a puppy from, I think it was like a ditch or something. And they were the happiest kid in the world. And we let him keep the puppy and everything. Because, again, it was, it was set up so there, you know, the kid wouldn't be in any danger. But, yeah, they do some insane stuff for these kids to make them happy. But they oh, have yeah. to. These are kids that have a chance of, you know. Never coming back. Yeah. Yet. Yeah. Like, I know at the at Children's Hospital, the, the, uh, my brother's wife was telling me one of the kids asked for fucking crazy shit. But because <laughs> he had the type of cancer that was much like 80% he was going to die. Like, he had a 20% chance of living. So they were like, yep, we're doing this. 
and I swear to God, he was like, there was like, and it, it was like a cosplay convention. She was telling me they had like the fucking Avenger. He wanted to meet the Avenger. Did they actually bring the actors or just people in cosplay? I, I think two of them were the actual actors and the others people in like really great fucking costumes. That's amazing. Like really awesome, like level glowing lights and everything like the fucking dude in the iron man suit kept his ma mask down so that you know the kid couldn't tell it wasn't robert downey jr but that fucking guy had like hydraulics and shit like the suit moved it glowed it made sounds like it was well, crazy. you know Ro you know the way robert downey jr is with kids it might have actually been him he could have been i don't know because a uh and actually didn't um she actually didn't work that day, so she only Aww. saw pictures. She only saw pictures. But, yeah, like, they brought in the whole fucking crew, man. But the thing is, not all those actors can make it out on the oh, yeah. I'm sure every actor out there would love to just go and, 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 and just make a cancer kid happy, but they can't do it all the time. But I think they actually did get – God, it, it was it, – fuck, did they get Mark Ruffalo? I don't know. I'd have to ask Ann again. But it was crazy, man. Like, they, they brought them in. They brought all these fucking characters in. The dude in the Spider-Man costume, the eyes actually worked. Oh, you know, like Spider-Man's awesome. eyes. Like, they were like little uh, little motors inside of his mask, and they were like, bzz, 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 you know, like he, he like narrow his eyes and stuff. It was crazy. It was fucking crazy. Yeah, but at the same time, those kids deserve it. Yeah. And one kid, one kid wanted to meet, like, a football player, and he came, you know? Like, you know, like, that stuff actually make a wish is amazing, you know? <laughs> card, uh, make a wish foundation always makes a good card and cards against humanity you stop that right now epidemic we know it's true but you stop that right now <laughs> we know it's true we know it's true we do um so magog any interesting stories from the service if you feel like sharing that is yeah i've got tons of stories from iraq some of some of the funnier ones are the ones four but they are great you know see if you like, had been in afghanistan i would have asked if you knew my little brother because he was in yeah, but that's... Oh, really? People automatically assume, oh, you were in the military? No, I know. But I, that's why I'm <laughs> like, if, if you I... had been there, I know there's two different areas. I'm not stupid. I know people No, but are... I, what I'm saying is even if I wasn't, likely... Yeah, not until not unless you were in... Um, I think he was bombed... This... No, he wasn't bombed this He was the one that shot the bombs out. Um, infantry and something that had to if do with was... the bombs. Yeah, if he was infantry mortar, fuck yeah, man. But that's Army. I was Air Force. So you were the but good stuff. He tried getting into the Air Force and the Navy, and they had fucked up his school record, so he had no choice but to go into the Army. Yeah, no, Air Force was... Um, but the reason I did convoys is because I, that was my job. I was transportation. You know? I was vehicle ops. So I was 2T1. So I I became uh, uh, a convoy driver because of 424 medium truck detachment. That was the Air Force doing convoys. And a lot of people don't get that. Like... Everybody always thought the army did it. No, the army sucked at it. We. <laughs> that um, is. That's not. Yeah, that's kind of true. <laughs> that's. I always that, heard now, stories. That, that that is the army, not the individual people. I no. love eighty-eight Mike guys. If there's any eighty-eight Mike guys listening, you you are brothers. But the army as like a a business, <laughs> like the upper leadership, they did not know. They do not know logistics like the air force does. Okay, that's what we do. We fucking deliver shit all over the planet. Like, that's what we do. We are like UPS, man. We know logistics. Except you we actually get it there cargo. on time? Yeah, we know how to move cargo and <laughs> troops. We have the planes to do it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and over so, in the like, background, the Navy's going, we can help. Yeah, like, so we took over convoys for a long time and had to kind of teach the upper army echelon that didn't know what the fuck they were doing because they were getting 88 my guys killed and we didn't like that we were like no we're stepping in fuck you let us show you how to do convoys properly you know like i love 88 my guys we rolled with 88 my gun trucks like it, it's nothing against the individual troops it's definitely against the army leadership they oh, did no. not know how um, to do that they did not how when that war kicked off they didn't know shit yeah my little <laughs> brother used to always say that they would. They were absolutely terrible at telling them where to where to aim the um, ro uh, the rockets and the missiles, and they they'd for they'd have to force the four soldiers out there to do a double check and shit. And it was it was a nightmare. Like the shit he told me, I'm like, okay, so they're retarded. Why are you guys out there getting killed because they're retarded? But but one of my favorite stories since there was asked, one of my favorite stories to tell, 
in in Iraq, in all the bathrooms, you know, the bathroom, the the shower caddies, and the bathroom caddies. These little buildings have like four or five stalls in them, and and some urinals. Um, there pretty much is the most lewd shit you could, you could ever fucking see written on the walls everywhere. <laughs> like that's what army and air force. That's what all military dicks on a wall. Like that's what happens. There's all kinds of lewd shit, just the nastiest fucking shit you'll read. Fucking, you want your dick sucked? Go to the fucking lieutenant so and so. You know, it's <laughs> like, oh shit. You know, like, oh man, it's bad. You know, there was a bunch of Obama shit too, man. It was bad, real bad. So this always stuck out to me. Like you never remember the really lewd shit because it's just so much of it. But one day I went to the fucking fucking bathroom caddy and I fucking stood at a urinal and I fucking started to piss and I looked up and on the wall it just said Toy Story 2 was okay <laughs> what <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> just out of but, everything that's there yeah, just out of all the dicks and the fucking lewd con <laughs> right there in the middle Toy Story 2 was okay. I mean, it was? <laughs> that, that always stuck with me. That always did. And here's for my arm, army friend here, dead man there, man. Uh, uh, I, I was at an army fob, and I went to the toilet, and I fucking closed the door, you know, the stall, and I sat down. I had to take a shit. And I fucking sat down, and then I looked up, and on the back of the door, when you closed the door, it said, uh, sit at attention, soldier. You're giving birth to an officer. <laughs> that's beautiful yep here I sit all broken hearted tried to shit but only farted <laughs> that was that was also one of the ones written <laughs> that's the latest take of all yes <laughs> army and air are the good brothers and the marines are the forgotten yeah, people forget that we're the reason Army and Air Force have the same rank structure in with their um, officers is because the Ar the Air Force was born from the Army Air Corps during World War Two. Mm -hmm. During World War Two, there was no Air Force. And see, now you're going to get educational, guys. It's time to learn with Magog. Yep. Here's another interesting fact about Air Force. There were two planes in World War II that got national attention for finishing all their bombing raids without getting shot down. They finished all their missions, and, and the plane was retired. And that didn't happen very often. A lot of people got shot down, right, by the Nazis. Mm -hmm. There were two planes. One of them, the one people remember, was called the Memphis Bell. And that's the one that they chose to print in the magazines and the papers back home to boost up patriotism. They were like, look at the Memphis Bell completing all its missions, taking it to the and they chose the Memphis Bell because it had the prettier name. But the Memphis Bell was not the first plane to finish all its bombing raids without getting shot down. The first plane was also uh, was actually called the Hell's Angel. <coughs> See, that one had the more <coughs> badass name. And and the newspapers chose not to to print that story because of the name of the plane. It sounded a little too scary. Here's what you don't know, or maybe you've guessed. The air crew of the Hell's Angel, after surviving World War II and completing all their missions, got out of the army, came back home, and started a little motorcycle gang and named it after their plane. Yep. The Hell's Angels. <laughs> so the Hell's Angels was born from the Army Air Corps slash Air Force. See, that doesn't surprise me because I've met a few of them. And they really like kids. Which is weird. <laughs> Problem is that throughout the 60s and 70s, the Hells Angels fucking deadly biker gang from hell. They would just ride around doing PCP and raping teenagers. Like, it was bad. Like, those guys were, like, wanted by the FBI. Now they're more of, like, a motorcycle club. Like, they've cleaned up their fucking criminal activities and shit. But, man... The, the Hells Angels were one of the most notorious motorcycle gangs in, in the history of the United States. You know? It also didn't help with the movies and stuff like that, making them look even worse. I don't think they needed help with that. Yeah, that's if you've true. Ever, if you've ever read what the Hells Angels do, you'd be like, Jesus Christ. They were kind of <laughs> psychotic. This makes like the Sons of Anarchy look like fucking pussies. <laughs> <laughs> 
Like, like the Sons of Anarchy tried to be like, we're the bad guys, but we want you to root for us. So the whole, like, endear, you know, endearing characters and stuff like that will get the audience to side with us. You never felt that way with the Hells Angels. No. Never. No. The moment you read a story of what the Hells Angels did, you're like, we're bad people. <laughs> yeah, but like you said, they've cleaned up their act. We got it. We we. I remember when I was in um, when I was in school, one of the pa- one of the fathers of one of my friends was a Hell's Angel, and you had to see this dude like the tattoos ever, big, big, bulky guy, and he come around the kids, and the parents were of course terrified of him. Come around the kids, and he was like the nicest dad you'd ever meet. But if anyone hit their kids around him, there was another guy that would come out. Right. Yeah. No. No, I mean I, I have mad respect clubs. I, I was uh I was a member of the car chapter of a motorcycle club, the uh section eights when I was younger. Um, because it was a big it was basically a huge auto club. They had a motorcycle club and they had a classic car club. But most of my friends were members of the motorcycle club and they had their leather cuts and they were probies for a while and you know they had to go through all the stuff they earned their blood wings they they went through that all that earned their patches all that stuff but most of it was charity work i mean they'd go and fucking protect kids and stuff you know like they go do um veteran funerals and stuff you know it was fucking insane you know these guys like a hundred motorcycles riding strong in front of a hearse well it's I, I think it's a lot because of uh, motorcycle gangs want to kind of change you know, the way everyone thinks of them because of all the movies and the right, 70s right. and the 80s and stuff. And Dead Man was one of those horrible Hells Angels. We, we don't talk about what he did in the 70s. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, um, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, they're just, at the end of the day, they're just a, a bunch of bro- uh, brothers, man. They just, uh, they found, a, they found a, a thing that they fit into and they found a common love, which is, for motorcycle riding, you know, and that can either be a good thing or lead to very bad things. But either way, you know, it's it's a uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. So, you guys have any other questions for my gog before we end it? Because I have to get out and take Miko to her training at uh, Marina Jacks, and then do a little bit of shopping for the family. <laughs> Dead man has a higher body count than most small hurricanes. We don't That's we don't talk true. about what he does. <laughs> what about the Disney biker gang? I mean, Mickey Mouse is a deadly motherfucker when he has a chain. You should see him riding around. You should see him riding around Orlando. You, you don't fuck with the mouse. You know, I make that joke, but I've seen biker gangs here with the the Donald yep. Duck is like the big thing of biker gangs in in Florida. They like the Donald Duck. Which do you blame him? Right. <laughs> He's a military guy with PTSD. Everyone can everyone can side with him. He's got asshole nephews. I, I was stationed in RAF Mildenhall, which is in England, and that was home to the bomber squadron in World War II called the 100th, and uh, the 100th Bomber Squadron. And uh, now they're KC-135s, but they still have the Box D emblem on their on their fin. And the reason they have that is because a notorious story from World War II about the, the, the 100th. They were called the Bloody 100th. They were a bomber squadron. See, back in the earliest part of World War II, when we first started, you know, when the British first started actually fighting the Nazis, uh, the rules of war was if you were a plane in distress or you were surrendering to the enemy, you lowered the landing while you were flying. And that told the enemy that you were surrendering and they would fly up next to you and escort you to the nearest airfield and you would surrender and become a prisoner of war. Well, a plane from the bloody 100th took off did its bombing run, was flying back when two Nazi planes flew up next to it. They didn't know that their landing gear had jammed down. Oh, no. They were not surrendering, but they they had a malfunction, and so the wheels were down. The Nazis thought they were surrendering. They flew up next to that plane, and they and the fucking people, the, the fucking British soldiers in the plane were like, dumbasses. <laughs> <laughs> it just blew those fucking planes out of the sky with their fucking, uh, you know, with their fucking 50 cal side guns, right? And after that, the Nazis stopped giving quarter to planes that had their landing gear. No shit, I would too. And the, and, and the 100th Bomber Squadron, bloody 100. <laughs> little fun story for about the uh 
about the the base I was All stationed at. All it takes at. is one asshole to ruin everything. <laughs> 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 so, anyway, thanks for having me on, Sin. That was great. It's been a lot of fun, and I hope you come join again sometime, and we're going to get you to play some games next time. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'll let you know when I'm free or whatever. Just uh, keep in touch. Don't be a stranger. And once again, thank you so much, everybody, for checking out my channel and donating and me and giving me a chance to, to build more Scar for real. <laughs> once again, guys, if you want to find him, it's Magog. You just have to look him up. I'm pretty sure he's the only Magog on YouTube, hopefully. Pretty much. And, yep. of course, check out his GoFundMe. When I put this uh, video up in a few days, I'll have a link directly to it so you guys can go ahead and check it out. And I've got to get going because I have a cute little puppy just giving me the biggest puppy dog eyes. And once again, thank you for joining me, Magog. It was a lot of fun as always. Yep, I had a blast. Thank you. See you, man. Later. And I'll see you guys later for a little bit of God of War or maybe a VR stream. We'll decide tonight. All right, guys, love you all. Bye.